Most people know that there are different types of rechargeable batteries, but how do you know which one is the best? You've probably heard of lithium ion batteries. They're in our phones, our smartwatches, laptops, but not all lithium batteries are the same. Some last longer, some are more or less prone to thermal runaway conditions, which can start a fire, which you don't want. Some can output higher amps or they have different weights. But did you know that some of the most safest and longest lasting rechargeable batteries have iron in them? This video is sponsored by Anchor and their new portable power stations. These are the kind that have the iron in the batteries. So in this video, I wanna explain why using iron in a battery makes a difference. I also wanna show you how I've been using these guys and other ways you can use them in general. This is the 535 and this is the 521 that I took apart in a previous video and explained what's on the inside of these portable power stations. Both of these use a type of battery chemistry called lithium iron phosphate or LFP for short. This is what a lot of electric vehicles are switching to and maybe you've heard of Anchor before or maybe you have some some of their charging products they are very well known so it's great to see them coming out with these LFP based power stations. LFP battery chemistry is also known by its chemical compound name where you can see the elements involved. There's lithium, there's iron which is Fe which comes from the Latin word for iron, there's phosphorus and then there's four atoms of oxygen and this last part with the phosphorus and oxygen bond is the phosphate. When we're talking about portable power stations there are two main battery chemistries mostly used and they're known by their abbreviations. One is called NMC and the other obviously is LFP. Both chemistries are safe and they work really well. NMC uses three main metals, nickel, manganese, and cobalt, and obviously LFP, the main metal is iron. Now I'm not gonna go into all the differences between the two, but LFP has two distinct advantages that I wanna point out, and the first is cycle life. On Anchor's website, it says that this battery can last six times more than others, and at first I was skeptical of that, but it's really the reality with LFP batteries. One of the measures of a battery is a cycle. Now that can get a little confusing, but for comparison a cycle is starting all the way up at hundred percent and draining the battery down to zero and then charging it back up to hundred percent. Now in some NMC battery chemistries they are rated for 500 cycles before they get to 80 percent of their original capacity and if we're talking lead acid batteries it's going to be even worse. Now if you compare that to an LFP battery like what's in here they're rated for 3,000 cycles before they get to 80 percent of their original capacity. So that's six times claim is true. And this matters because when I use these things, I'm not really worried about wear and tear in terms of cycle life. 3,000 cycles of all the way up, all the way down every day is between eight and nine years. And typically you're not gonna use it from 100% down to 0% every single day. Now there are other considerations like temperature and the current on the charge and discharge of the batteries, but an LFP battery's lifespan can be greatly extended when that charge and discharge is smaller than that zero to 100%. So one thing I've been doing these past few weeks is actually operating my desk sort of like an off-grid setup. I charge the 535 up by solar panels and then I can bring it in here and run my external monitor through the AC port, my main MacBook through the USB-C power delivery port, and then I can charge up my phone and my watch with these USB-C ports. And if you can see here, it says it's using about 50 watts of power, all of those things, and I'm near full charge here, and it says it's gonna work for over eight hours. So because I have the two power stations, I can charge one up while I'm using the other. Anchor is coming out with a compatible solar panel, but I had to use the supplied 12 volt adapter with alligator clips to charge them with my 100 watt panel. And this has been working great to power part of my office by sunlight. The second distinctive I wanna point out about LFB batteries is that they have a lower chance of releasing a lot of energy and catching fire when there's damage or the cells are shorted. Now again, NMC batteries are safe too. We pretty much use them in all of our devices, but we don't even tend to think about like what kind of batteries you know, these things are. But the chemical makeup of the LFP batteries help prevent a condition called thermal runaway. Now check out this video here. Here they're intentionally causing a short circuit and piercing an NMC battery. Again, NMC batteries are very safe. We use them all the time, but this is an extreme situation. But watch what happens when they pierce the LFP battery. Really nothing happens. Take a look at this chart from Sandia National Labs from the US Department of Energy from experiments they did on lithium iron battery types and how much energy is released when cells enter a thermal runaway state. You can see down here LFP is way at the bottom. And if you look at the top right, they had to change the scale dramatically to show the little bump in energy release. So in addition to those two distinctives, LFP batteries also have no memory effect like you might be used to if you remember the 
old style batteries. But basically the, the anchor here, 535, has a 512 watt hour capacity and this one has a 256 watt hour capacity and you just don't have to worry about it. You just charge them, discharge them, you use them like you want to use them. But there's one thing that you do not want to do with LFP batteries. You don't want to try to charge them when the internal battery pack is below freezing temperature. So just avoid that and you'll be good to go. Since I've talked about the 521 before, I did run a few tests on the new 535 and one one is the AC inverter efficiency test where I drain the battery from 100 down to 0% through the AC port. So if we do the math, this is about an 89% inverter efficiency, which is good. And what's been noticeable about using the 535 is how little the fan kicks on. It seems like I have to draw over about 350 watts before the fan kicks on, and even then, I think it's really quiet. When I'm inside charging it, I did use the adapter that came with the 535, but something that's neat on both of these units is that you can charge from the wall and through the USB-C at the same time. So with this method, you can go from 0 to 80% in 2.4 hours on the 535 or 0 to 80 in 1.4 hours on the 521. So I got my friend Yoda back to help answer a very important question. What can you do with these? I mentioned I've been running part of my office off grid with them and if the power were to go out, I'd be able to plug in my cable modem and my router either to either one of them. I could use a power strip over here, but I could keep going. Or the other day, my laptop was near empty, so I grabbed the 535 on my way out the door because I had to work from my car and it came in handy. Or another time I was in my car and I found it really helpful to use the 12 volt port when I was vacuuming things up to get ready for a trip. Now, if there was a power outage at night, one of the first things I would do is I would use the built-in LED light here and then I would grab another light and then I would charge up my phone. Next, I would plug in my laptop and I'd also grab my mini fridge that I can run from the 12 volt port here and I would probably move over some key food items. Now with everything running, including the mini fridge, it says I'm pulling about 90 watts of power and at 90% battery, I could expect about four and a half hours of runtime. Now another thing I wanna point out about the 535 here is that these four AC outlets combined can put an output of 500 watts and they can do a surge of up to 1000 watts. So what this means is you probably can't run your full size refrigerator, but you might be able to run a small one off of these AC outlets if the surge on the compressor is under 1000 watts. These portable power stations are great to have around because you have AC and DC power wherever you go and whenever you need it, and they have those lithium ion phosphate batteries in them, so they're gonna last a really long time. Now, when I was playing around and testing this guy, I wanted to ask some questions, and I had a fun time talking with the anchor team about some of the electrical engineering on the inside of this, so that was really cool. And while doing that, I could really tell that they cared about the quality of their products, and I was impressed that they talked shop with me. Now, if you have any questions about these or battery chemistry, comment down below, and I'll keep the video description updated on any deals or information related to power stations. Thank you to Anchor for sponsoring this video. They are one of the most recognized names out there for power charging and batteries. And if you like what I did with this guy and that solar panel, perhaps you'd like this video up here where I helped my neighbor install a solar panel system on their roof.